if we're ever going to see that kind of day in Nigeria. But um, let me ask you, you, you talked about the huge division and a, a number of people have said over and over again, that is something that can only be attributed to the activities of politicians across party lines. Where is all of that division coming from? Okay, thank you. I have read and heard some suggestions that unknowingly suggest or tries to impugn or insinuate that probably opposition or some elements are the ones wrong. That's not true. The country got divided so badly because of the nepotistic attitude that they started with. They, it got so bad because those who are speaking this divisive language within the country have been left to just do it without, with reckless abandon. For more than three years, in spite of me being in opposition, I have been very nervous as to how everybody just comes to national space and talks as if the country is not controllable. And I get extremely depressed. Why? Because I expect, in the minimum, two people that I expect them that they know what to do. The first is the president himself. I expect him to know what to do. The second is the national security advisor, Mongunu. Sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, is this not Mongunu? Is it, is it the same Mongunu, the Mongunu, that will be sitting as the national security advisor of this country? Intelligence will be at the lowest ebb. People are just doing whatever they like, however they like, underneath the pretense that we're running democracy. If we do not have a country, if the country implodes on all our heads, where the hell are we going to go? And when you, act, when you see them come to public space, you say, ah, give them patience. Do, 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 do. You won't even see the, anything to suggest to you that they have put themselves in the shoes of the people they're talking to. And on behalf for the president, with due respect, nobody would have taken you 30 years from retirement to come and lead this country if you are not going to lead from the front. Whereas I do not expect you to sidestep all democratic institutions, but that does not mean that things can't still happen within the existing structure that you have on your hand. And therefore, if one is beginning to get the impression that the president is truly not interested, probably too tired, or he has been, you know, he has given up on even his own aids, why would you ask that the story of Nigeria would be Kidnapping today, ransom tomorrow. Kidnapping today, ransom tomorrow. Kidnapping today, ransom tomorrow. What are we doing about the underpinnings? We talked to you about unemployment. You say it's not a big deal. How can it not be a big deal? What is foiling it? We talked to you about nepotism. You say it's not a big deal. What is foiling the hatred of the tribes? How can anybody be president of this Nigeria, for God's sake, and allow people to be using ethnic divisions and rhetorics to, under, to overmine, undermine the country? One, one organization will speak from the Southwest. Instead of them to shut them up immediately, one organization will be replying them in the, in the North. How did you become a country where ethnic militias are the ones that are running this country for us? Well, Mr. Shomin. <laughs>